So we'll continue from today's uh, session. Where do we begin learning Buddhism? Shayamuni Buddha, the teaching that was given to him. When we categorize them together, there are 84,000 uh, methods of cultivation. And among so many um, methods that was given to him, how do we start? How do we choose among so many choices? Every one, every method given, chose by him, I mean, given by Buddha is correct, but which one is the one suitable for us? This is a very important um, point for us, something we need to concern about when we're learning. So when learning Buddhism, when you go to a temple, uh, burn some incense to offer to the Buddha or offering flower to the triple gem. Um, so we do all this and some people might thought that's it for Buddhism. That's all that is to Buddhism. However, true, uh, like if you actually want to learn Buddhism, where do we start? Where do we begin? We must be cleared and we must be uh, aware of that, of this aspect. Otherwise, we will waste our time when we learn. Uh, otherwise, we spend all these years read nothing in return, like learn nothing in return. Uh, in the past, uh, us uh, who chant Amitofo, um, our patriarch said that everyone who chant Amitofo, who practice this method, will be able to reach Pure Land. No one is left behind. But why, in reality, so many people seem like chanting Amitofo but not getting there? Because we have habits that stops us from getting to there. What is the cause? What is the habits that stop us from getting to Pure Land? That's why we need to discuss it today. If we're not clear, what obstacle lies in front of us? How do we get blessings, actual blessings, actual help uh, from Buddha and Bodhisattvas? It became religion instead, unfortunately. If we do not understand how, where do we begin learning Buddhism? And that's what we are trying to discuss today. Uh, where do we begin in Buddhism, in learning Buddhism? Where do we enter? Which door do we enter into this vast ocean? Let's continue next slide. Uh, in Chinese Mahayana Buddhism, we usually uh, use four bodhisattvas uh, as a method to um, educate everyone. Uh, in Chinese uh, mountains, there are four very famous Buddhist mountains. In Zhouhua, there's Siddhikabha, Dijang Bodhisattva, Puto for Guan Yin, and Erme for the Pusian and Wu Tai for the Manjushri Bodhisattva. There are four big Bodhisattvas. And they are commonly used in education of Buddhism. So what do they represent? We must be clear. What do they represent? What do these four Bodhisattvas symbolize? First, it reflects, it shows when we learn Buddhism, we need to have an order of learning, like primary, secondary, tertiary. Or, in other words, when we learn, we need to have a sequence. We need to follow a certain steps, a sequence when we learn Buddhism. Step one, step two, step three, step four. One by one, step by step. Why? Because it depends on our 
capability. Like you're born, you're born with certain capability. Some people who are what we call genius immediately can reach the highest level in Buddhism. But for all, for us, uh, in the common uh, level, we need to follow the steps one by one so that we can learn it. We actually can learn it. So these four bodhisattvas, among all four of them, whom do we start with? It's very important questions. Uh, and what do they represent? This spirit, as in what value do they represent? All of them, each of them has represent uh, four core values when we're learning Buddhism that we need to master, we need to grasp. Uh, as a Buddhist, we need to um, master and hold on to this value. So what are these four values that we should learn from Bodhisattvas? We will talk about that in detail later. So for example, Bodhisattva Siddhikarpa, uh, what did Siddhikarpa or in Chinese Dizang, Earth Treasure, uh, represents? Uh, and what level of attainment, other than order of learning, second one is the, oh, the level of attainment in Buddhism. What is level of attainment? That means how the level of wisdom, the scale, the, the depth, the, the horizon of their wisdom, uh, which level are they in, uh, represents, sorry. And number three is to improve your capability your skills, uh, uh, your wisdom uh, to see through the realities in this uh, world we we'll call Saha world or the world that is messy, We're full of false will, false thoughts and all that. How do you see through it, knowing right and wrong and how do you solve it? It all relies on your level of attainment. If our level of attainment did not increase, how do we have wisdom? With higher wisdom means our level of attainment better and we can get better at handling the world. These four bodhisattva represents that, so we need to learn about them. However, let's continue. Although these four bodhisattvas represent different aspects, you know, different uh, spirits, stage of learning Buddhism. Like Manjushri Bodhisattva, what do they represent? Or the Universal Worthy Bodhisattva, what do they mean? Uh, they all represent different uh, value, but their goal, their, their, their um, principle, they are all, how to say, encompassing one another. We call it well-roundedness. Right? For example, uh, Siddhikapa Buddha, uh, Bodhisattva, whatever he, value he represents, whatever virtues he has, Bodhisattva Guan Yin has it, Bodhisattva Manjushri has it, Bodhisattva Universal Word has it. Four is one, one is four. So, right? One of them have a very specialized virtue, but each others have the same virtues as they. It's just they trying to stand out to help us. Doesn't matter which four of the bodhisattva you choose, uh, these four big bodhisattvas. Uh, among four of them, we do need to know which order of learning. Where do we start? And then where do we end? There's a reason why they split into four. Uh, so you cannot jump the queue. Uh, can't be like, I like Guan Yin Bodhisattva. I, I just learn straight from her. Nothing's wrong with that. All right, Manjushri Bodhisattva represents wisdom. I learn straight from him. Nothing's wrong with that. However, why we have this order of learning is we might uh, wasted our energy if we skipped the steps. Every Bodhisattva are actually well-rounded and perfect. That means they have everything. They have encompassed everything. But what they represent is order of learning for us. Uh, each of them trying to tell us, trying to teach us. 
uh, to reach the same perfection, the same roundedness, uh, to get to the highest level of attainment. If we follow it, we'll get there. So today, uh, among these four bodhisattvas, each value that represents, you cannot, if you lack one out of four, your attainment is not perfect. That means you cannot reach Buddhahood. You cannot leave one behind. Because our worldly, the worldly people of the world, they lack most. What did they lack the most? All right, is the value these four bodhisattva represents. It's very interesting. Like us, the Buddhists, uh, we want the Chanamito four. We want to be wise. Without Manjushri Bodhisattva, we cannot. But if if you want to be as smart, uh, well, as wise as Manjushri Bodhisattva, without the foundation of Siddhigarbha Bodhisattva, you can't. You can't get that level. Uh, or you want to be as compassionate as Guan Yin Bodhisattva or as Alva Loi Kitesvara. But without wisdom, your compassion will not be perfect. You will not use in the right way. Like you walk, you require two legs to walk properly. Without one, if you're lacking one leg, you can't walk properly. <laughs> so now we know these four bodhisattva are equally important into our life. They all represent something we need to have a happy life. Uh, they are all high wisdoms. Uh, since we understand like they are well rounded, they are perfect. So where do we begin? <laughs> The order of learning is from the order of learning. The first one is uh, Siddhi Gaba uh, Bodhisattva or Di Zhang, direct translation of treasure. Uh, we begin from him. When we learn Buddhism, we learn from there. And Buddha would ask, if you ask Buddha, where do I begin, Buddha, in learning your Dharma? He point out, he will point out, learn the spirit of Bodhisattva. Got uh, Siddhigabha Bodhisattva. Why? This Bodhisattva has infinite uh, wisdom, merits, skills. All Buddhas of all directions, of all past, present, future. Uh, why, among so many choices to learn from, we begin with him? Why do we begin from him? Among everyone. Like for us in Pure Land. If we if we depart from Siddhigabha Bodhisattva spirit value, you cannot go to Pure Land. Without this foundation, there's no Pure Land for you, for us. So, Buddha told us, we begin from him, from his what spirit he represents, because it's not just there for us to offer incense and flowers. What do they represent? Siddha Gaba Bodhisattva represents our root our heart, the, 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 the ground that we stand on, no matter what method you practice, without Bodhisattva Siddhikapa's value in you, the basic that he has represent, right? 
like the character, if you don't have his, uh, if your character doesn't have that value as a basis, you could not reach the highest uh, attainment, which is Buddhahood or Antara Samya Sambodhi. Equally perfect enlightenment. Because without his foundation, you cannot achieve anything in Buddhism. No matter how, how well you chant Amitabha, how frequent you chant Amitabha, or any other methods of Buddhism, uh, without his value uh, imbued in your character, your action, speech, thought, then you can't have a guarantee to pure land. So that's why he represents like a tree. Without a root, how can tree have fruits? Uh, without roots, where are the stems, where are the branch, where are the fruit, where are the flowers? Uh, when we live in this world, uh, without our parents, how do we survive? So who gave us this? Like our parents provide us with everything. Food, shelter, love, family love and all that. Without this, how do we grow properly? So they are like the roots. The case like when we are very, uh, very successful in our uh, business uh, with a lot of money, with a lot of uh, results. Uh, however, compared to your achievement in this society, compared to your own parents, that towards you, it's not comparable. Their, their spirit is uh, immeasurable, their, their kindness. So this is why we call the Siddhikaba Bodhisattva represents a root. If you want to learn Buddhism, you need to start how to, you need to begin with filial piety. How do we be filial or love and respect towards our parents? That's the first step. And that's what he's trying to tell us through his example. Being a human, we also need to learn how to be respectful towards our teacher. These are very important uh, factors. And we will explain it in detail. 49 years of Buddha's speech, they all follow this core. <laughs> 49 years of his speech, it's all about this foundation. You can say it is an annotation of the original vows of Siddhikaba Bodhisattva Sutra. Look at the era nowadays. If we look our people, our friends, the people around us, Observe carefully, friends, relatives, people in this era, especially right now, in this time, including ourselves. Why is our affliction so heavy? Why do we find trouble in chanting Amitofo? <coughs> Have we grown our wisdom? So, one, number one is severely affected, afflicted. After chanting so many years, we still felt restless in front of all that turbulent times in society, in family as well. And the cause of all this problem is our roots has been forgotten by ourselves. We forgot the roots, we forgot our foundation uh, for, to our correct, or our, to our well-being and characters. Uh, as a way to saying you forgot your roots, it's a way to uh, remind you. And this is this is very easy. Like people easily forgot 
where they come from. Uh, I'd like to share some stories 10 years ago. Uh, there is a young people uh, came to my temple to find me. He wants to debate with me. Do I have to respond to him? No, I don't have to. Because it's the waste of time. But he told me, after telling me so many things, one of them is, uh, Buddhism is all about filial piety, right? Because you guys talk a lot about that. What era is this? What time is this? This is an era of technology. Why do we need filial piety? If we don't follow the flow of the era, change according to the era, we will be rejected. That means what he meant is that we are outdated. The values are outdated. So these are a very severe view that is quite common. That means what he meant is in future you, you, don't, you don't even need to have parents. You can use in vitro fertilization. That means you, you, you require the, the signs to help you to get fertilized and all that. But I didn't respond. But when I heard that, I always I have a thought upon hearing his you know, view. I know why now the society is getting messy and messier, chaotic, turbulent nowadays. Because when interaction between parents and child, there's a lot of um, uh, young people, they are impatient with their parents. And they were easily uh, was angry and talk back in a very rude way. So that why do we have a, such a turbulent society because of people like this? A lot of these kind of people who forgot where they come from, like why they are here today because of people who give everything they have for them. They forgot them. Uh, if everyone forget about roots, the society is a mess, in a mess. So that's why I advise all the elder people, elder people who are those who are parents, take care of yourself. It's not, you can't rely on your children anymore. Because if you have too much hope when relying on, you know, there's a common Chinese saying that you have children to help you to overcome the, the pain of age, uh, uh, age aging. So right now in this era, it's hard. You can't rely on them because of this false views. First thing is the society as well, everything is busier, everything is more tight in schedule. They don't have time to take care of their own, not even their own children, let alone their own parents. And this is why, this is one of the sympathetic parts of the people nowadays. And this is why there is such a, a booming industry in retirement. Because no. there's a reality of nowadays. So young people, I urge all of you, all of us, no matter how successful, how high, what peak you have achieved in your field, never forgot the love your parents gave it to you. Never forgot those who give everything they have to you. Their love to you, their care to you. It's, that's what matters. Truly, because if we can't even get this point correct, there's no point to come to Buddhism and learn from Buddha. You have no roots, no land, you can't build anything. This is why we need to start from Siddhikapa Bodhisattva. This is why. So, if you want to be successful in cultivating Buddhism, achieve Buddhahood, begin from here. Number one, Siddhikabha Bodhisattva represents video piety. Love and respect towards our elders, basically. Second, first thing is what defines humanity, repaying kindness. Second thing is being aware, appreciate the kindness we actually receive from people around us, start from our parents, from everyone else. It's not given from the God, it's not from a heavenly beings up above, it's by people, your society, that gives you everything they have. 
So repay the kindness for those who actually give it to you. So number one, among our four kindnesses above, right, when we do the dedication of merit, the first one is parents, second is the teacher or the triple gem, Buddha Dhamma Sangha. The fourth one is country, the fifth is the society, the all the being and sentient beings. Number three, Bodhisattva represents a virtues, you know, the merits of cultivating virtues. With virtues, uh, if you look at uh, modern people, when when you when you look at the society nowadays, you have you can see a common um, problem: lacking virtues, lacking decency. Right? We use a simple word: decency. If you look around them, no matter what they do, there's a, a lot of those driven purely by self-interest, purely, and driven by uh, desires, purely by desires. And they, because of that, they, they, they're willing to let go any semblance of dignity as a human and do something that is basically disgusting. So I have a story. I have a friend. I have a movie given to me from my friend, my classmate. This is about. Observation of current society. And the story goes by a good doctor. How, why is he addressed as good doctor? Because in this hospital, a lot of other doctors, they are lacking virtues, lacking ethics. And this, I think it's a documentary. It's showing behind the scene what actually happens in the hospital and those doctors not following their ethics. And knowing this reality, not just in one field, in many fields, we understood that this is truly the end, like the world that Buddha described for a Dharma ending age. Uh, so back to the point, uh, we need to understand the worldly goodness or all goodness, uh, all kind, all things that are good in the world, do not depart from the foundation of filial piety from being respectful and loving towards your elders, parents. Without this foundation, whatever good you did towards anyone else, it's not sincere. A lot of people like to give, for example, a like to like to offer to a temple. Uh, I like this temple, I give a lot of money to help them to build up. Uh, if this uh, uh, Dharma Center likes to build something, they will help. However, if you look at their character, their character in private, behind the scene. To those who give everything to them, to those who are kind to, to this person, he's not being very kind towards their own loved ones. So this person might look like a good people donating all these things. But in behind the scene, when treating their own parents, lacking a basic virtue of respect. And this Sayamuni Buddha's Dharma for 49 years, right? He's been giving us the talk for 49 years. All of them, each details, each sutras, they're actually core, the center around Siddhikabha Bodhisattva Sutra. That means it's the sutra about Philippiety. Right. They do not depart from this. You can call it an annotation of this sutra. So we cannot just read through this sutra and treat it like uh, anything. Like, like we, we need to appreciate the importance of this in our cultivation. Say, we talk about filial piety, how does it look like in Chinese? In Chinese characters, filial piety or xiao in pronunciation is a symbol. 
So every Chinese character is a symbol. So what is symbol comprise of? Elder, a symbol of elder on the top, and symbol of young at the bottom. Elder and young, when you combine them, means elder generation and younger generation, if they are one, it's what we call filial piety. The elder were at both on, on top. All right. Uh, it's not about, it, we're not talking about the Lao Tzu in Taoism. <laughs> we're talking about combination of these two words. It's called filial piety. And this is where this word xiao in Chinese came from. So if we want to go further with the meaning, half a uh, generations, elder generations, younger generations, they are one, one entity. They cannot be separated. You cannot be separated from your own parents. You cannot be separated from your own ancestors. And that's the original meaning of filial piety, Xiao. That's why the patriarch of Buddhism told us that the elder generations have their own elder generations. That means the past has no beginning. There's no origin. There's endless beginning. The younger generations have their own younger generations. There are no end for the next generation who will be infinite. So how can it be separated? Beginning and end are one. So no matter what situation is the relationship is between you and your elders, your parents, the relationship is there. You cannot be separated. No matter good or bad. For example, when I met someone in the past, he told me he hates his parents, his father, sorry, he hates his father. Uh, I really hate him. But I told him, no matter how much you hate him, the fact is he is your father. For example, on the other hand, your children, no matter how much you dislike your children, uh, or because maybe they are not being uh, you know, good or, or something like that, they are still your children. This thing cannot be separated. In Buddhism, filial piety, we have other words for it. If you perfect the, the filial piety, it becomes Dhammakaya, or body of the truth, the body of the truth. What does it mean for us? If you want to be pure land, born in pure land, if you want to be liberated from sufferings, if you want to sever the uh, cause of life, uh, recycle, uh, reincarnation, uh, or anything in the worldly phenomena, and anything that happens in the world, uh, born from Dhammakaya, arise from this body of truth. And what does this Dhammakaya, uh, if you crystallize into a value, it call, it's called filial piety. For example, Buddha of the past, present, future, and of the ten directions, they have attained Buddhahood, that means perfection of virtues. Um, some haven't, even, haven't reached yet, because future, right? Future Buddha. But each of them, no matter where they are, when they are, when they want to begin this journey towards Buddhahood, they begin with filial piety, Xiao. So why? Because uh, Buddha will always want to help all beings, just like being filial piety towards all beings, treating everyone like their parents. This is the heart of Buddha. If you're not being filial piety, could you even get anywhere in Buddhism? Say Amitabha Buddha. He's now already a Buddha. Even when he's a Buddha, he is still continuing the practice of filial piety. To whom? To all of us, to all beings. He's, he, he keeps giving and helping and take caring of all beings. That's filial piety. Love and respect. So we need to know Philip Idi is the ship that carries Buddha to the Buddha. If 
you you born in this world with fortunes into a fortunate family. What do they rely on? What where did this merit came from? Philippi. So if you take back uh, go back to Siddhikapa Bodhisattvas. What is the special part about uh, his symbol? Um, in the sutra about him, uh, the most unique part, the excellent part of him, is he started his act of philippity from his mother. So he, he the first person he philippity towards is his mother. So, for example, nowadays we always have Mother's Day, right? No matter what country you are, you always have Mother's Day. Uh, Mother's Day are relatively uh, not as popular as Mother's Day, right? Why? Because mothers um, virtue towards us, the kindness they gave it to us is immeasurable. For us, it's immeasurable. First thing is the the virtue or the kindness of giving birth to us, keeping us in, into this world. So if you read the sutra of the parents, uh, how hard it is to repay the kindness to the parents. Um, Buddha has a description, no matter how much, no matter how you repay their kindness, you still cannot reach full repayment to them. And that means a parents, a mother, especially, uh, how respectful they should be, like how we should respect who to that them because of their kindness. In Siddhikabha Sutra, there are two famous story tales that represent this value. First one is Brahman woman. Second one is bright eyes, uh, the woman with a bright eyes. These are all about his past life where he saved his mom. Her, her mom, back then he is a lady, her mom. And um, her mom, both both these ladies, their mom uh, committed negative karma and born in the three world realms. And when they know, when this past life of Siddhikapa Bodhisattva knows that their, his mother is suffering, he immediately, uh, I mean, he used a lot of energy trying to get them back to the, norm, uh, to the three higher realms. It's very uh, touching and very sincere. Like Brahman woman, because in order to save his mom to reborn in the better realms, she willing to she's willing to sacrifice her life. Uh, other than that, she also helped the triple gem, uh, built the Buddha uh, tower, helped the poor. Uh, all this merit dedicated to her mom so that her mom can be born in the better realm. Uh, all she can think about is to repay the kindness to her mom. And knowing her mom falling into the lower realm, is she's feeling uh, urgent, like very, very desperate to help her. Same goes for the bright eyes. To find people like that right now, in our society, is, it's rare, it's very rare. Therefore, we need to uh, rely on ourselves. Uh, it's very rare to find people like this. So, in the, in the end, what we need to bring home is, we need to rely on yourself, all right? Break all the evils, deeds, and do all the good deeds. So that, in the very least, even you did not manage to go to Pure Land, you're not falling into three lower rims. Who wants to go there? Who wants to be an animal, a ghost, or a healthy being? Let's not talk about the three lower realms. Even now here, who wants to go and uh, be suffered? Who wants to take suffering upon themselves? So in order to repay the kindness of our mother, not only that we need to refrain from wrongdoing, we also need to prevent any wrong thoughts from arising in our mind. That your mind has to be right, righteous, clear. Only then you are able to repay their kindness. 
And with this fear of in our mind, we have restraint in our conduct. We do not dare do something that harms them, that hurts their heart, cause them to be sad. So what Buddha are trying to teach us in this is the power of filial piety, the power of love towards your parents. Mom, it stops you from doing something extreme, or something bad. It, it helps you to have restraint. If we go beyond that, how powerful is the virtue of filial piety? But Buddha has mentioned once in the Sutra, the driving force behind one's diligent pursuit of body, that means if you want to go full enlightenment, is filial piety. This is how powerful it is. Normal people usually takes, you know, a long time to be Buddha. But if you look at Amitabha Buddha, he only takes five kalpas instead of infinite or three big kalpas. That means it's shortened the time. Uh, because Amitabha always think about all beings, he wants to build a pure land so that everyone can suffer less and quickly go to the pure land. And this filial piety, this heart of love and respect towards all beings, drives him to speed up his enlightenment. And also, as you perfecting this virtue towards your parents, towards every beings, so does your pro progression towards the perfection of body, which is the Buddhahood. For example, why do normal people nowadays, they all work so hard to get more money? Why? Because they were driven by incentives, monetary incentives or other form of incentives. Without incentives, they would not work so hard, right? To want money in form of prestige, especially money. Like, if I want to do business, I, my goal is to earn the money. Same for the Buddha and Bodhisattva. But the target of their incentive is filial piety. Because of uh, the urge to relieve the sufferings of all beings, he's driven to speed up his enlightenment so that he can quickly help them. So that's the intention. That's why Buddha told us, towards our parents, as our mom, uh, as more as we are perfecting our the ways we repay their kindness, the progression towards the perfection of body, which is Buddhahood, is getting faster and better. Amitabha Buddha is the best example. Why is his? Why does Pure Land, Western Pure Land, outshines the Buddhas of all? the pure land of other Buddhas, of ten directions, all Buddhas from ten directions, praising his pure land. He's, he even pray, they all praise to a level where saying that he's the supreme among the enlightened, supreme among the, the, the kings among the Buddhas, to that level, in, according to Infinite Life Sutra. That because of these achievements, because of his heart. In our level, if we want to live a better life in the next life, next existence. We need to have huge merits, huge fortunes. How do we have huge fortune? In Chinese, there are five categories of fortunes. Long life, good death, uh, yep. and all these fortunes came from Vidapati, from a heart of love and respect towards your parents. This is true. This is the root of the fortunes of filial piety from love and respect towards your elders. A historical example in Han Dynasty 1,500 years ago. It's a very long uh, era, about 400 years, 300 to 400 years of uh, the, the dynasty's lifespan. In the beginning, when a Han emperor wants to assign uh, a role, like find someone to fill in the role of a minister, he begins by looking at the prestige, I mean the reputation of this person towards their parents. Are they being good towards 
their own parents. Because if he could or she could be, if he could be um, loving towards people who, you know, have been kind to them, and obviously he knows how to repay kindness, right? They will be a very loyal and very um, honest uh, officials in the nation. Han Dynasty, or well, I think including three, three kingdoms, is about 500 years in lifespan. There are very few China after unification that can last more than the Han Dynasty because Han Dynasty built its empire on the basis of fear piety. In Buddhism, this is why we have Siddhigapa Bodhisattva as the first step, it's the first example we should learn when practicing Buddhism. It's trying to tell us Buddhism starts from filial piety and respect. Buddhism starts from appreciating the kindness shown by others by paying them in return. Buddhism starts from respecting the teacher and their teachings. This is the and Buddhism starts from broadening the heart and mind. And because of this, we are able to liberate from sufferings. From here, we start to appreciate the compassion of Buddha. He told us the root, the first important thing we should grasp. The spirit of Siddhigabha Bodhisattva is like what we mentioned just now, like a big tree. Without root, how can it be stem, branch, leaf, flower, fruit? That's the root of our cultivation, basics of our cultivation, perfection of our characters. So, the education system represented by Siddhikapa Bodhisattva is perfect, well-rounded, no matter in the content of the teaching or the methods of teaching, the way they teach and the content they teach. It's perfect, it's well-rounded. We should know about that. So, among four Bodhisattvas, Siddhikapa or Dijang Bodhisattva is the first in line because this is where Buddhism is founded on. And the name is already telling us the earth treasure. Buddhism builds on discipleship. We all know that. Teacher student relationships, which is educational relationship rather than religious relationship. Because we must aware if it becomes a religion, it is superstitious by nature because they are all working on blind worshipping and all that. If you look at the worldly religions, if they are not using the education, it becomes a superstitious. And when they were superstitious in the sense we're blind, uh, well, look in current situation, we are already lost in our wandering thoughts. Uh, because we have so much wondering thoughts and we got um, confused with so many things happening around us. All right. Are we going to add another layer of confusion to us? Another layer of superstition to confuse ourselves further? There's no need for that. The purpose of Shayamuni Buddha's Dharma is to help us to break through Ill delusions and be awakened to the truth. Because only when you're awake, knowing what is the cause and effect, what to prevent, when to do it, you can have a real happiness. You'll be preventing yourself from falling into sufferings. Or have a peace of mind and a fulfilling life. This is the discipleship of Buddhism. Now that we know the foundation of Buddhist education is built on discipleship. But discipleship, Buddha also told us, it is built on filial piety. Without love and respect towards your parents, how can you be respectful towards your teacher, basically? Without this as a core, we 
看 g r o w 不得了哎！所以释迦牟尼佛所讲的法。If a person disrespects those who, are, who love them the most, which is parents, how can they be respectful towards the teacher? Impossible. Basic logic. When you look at teachers, uh, student in the in the in the school right nowadays, the way the attitude, you know, showing some attitudes towards teacher, then you understand that this is not a. Uh, this is. Something's lacking at home. Uh, it's not easy for teacher uh, because parents uh, home education has issues. So teacher can only do so much. If they can't even respect their teacher, how can they learn anything? That means how can they be awakened to the truth? Uh, say you have disrespect towards Amitabha, your teacher. How can you gain enlightenment? Right. How can you be liberate without this awakening? How can you be liberate from sufferings? Because you're not listening to anything he said. Like Shaya Muni Buddha, everything he taught us, everything, every single word is not there just for the sake of it. Everything is coming out from the true nature. And Buddhism relies on your respect in order to dig the treasure of our true nature. Without that, how can we? Be awakened, and so if there is a lacking of discipleship, it represents lacking of respect in general towards your student, the teacher, your own teacher, and that means you lacking love and respect towards your own parents. That means if you're not like listening anything because lack of respect, right? You you just you just let it be. You don't even take in what they said. How can we achieve anything then? How can we learn anything to achieve anything? That's why Siddhikapa Bodhisattva, everyone would know already at this stage. Uh, he represents filial piety. His sutra, sutra about him, Siddhikapa Sutra, it's like Buddhism's doctrine of philopathy. People who being filial piety towards parents and respectful towards teacher is given the title Siddhikapa Bodhisattva. It's a title. If you are being respectful and loving towards your parents and teacher, if you treat your parents with loving heart, if you treat your teachers with uh, reverence and respect towards the teaching, then you are the Siddhikapa Bodhisattva. This is where you enter. This is how you begin your journey. Not just the parents of this life, the parents of past life, many, many past life. That means all beings in general. You need to expand this loving heart from towards the people close to you, towards everyone else. Expand. With this foundation in your character, if you are like that, truly like that, then when you want to learn further and get better and, and more sophisticated in your learning, you you progress very quickly. That's why all the Bod uh, Bodhisattvas or the Buddhas, when they represent, they, when they're trying to turn the Dharma wheels, they all born into the family of emperors and kings. You can imagine how big their merit is and fortune is because they all cultivate this filial piety. So in our case, if you want to have a good family or born into a happy family or you want to have your children to be loving and respect towards you, then you need to start doing it towards your own parents. If we can't even be respectful and loving towards our elders, how can you expect when you become an elder being respectful by your youngest? So, as a young people, we must understand that no matter how smart we are, how capable we are, uh, never fall into the trap of arrogance. Always remember your roots, only then you can grow very far. As a Buddhist, we need to learn how to love people, how to respect people. 
especially modern time, we need to learn because it is an unfamiliar and even unknown to people how to be uh, loving people, including especially people in the West. The concept is not strong over there. So next week we'll talk about that in detail. How do we be fit it? So th that's it for today. Uh, basic uh, introduction on where to start in learning Buddhism. Uh, explaining why we need to be respectful towards our elders, our parents, and not just parents of this life, parents of many, many lives in the past. If you understand clear about these teachings, this principle, you will understand that all beings are your parents at one point in time. And how can you harm your own parents, knowing that they are your parents? Uh, even they harm you, you will not have the heart to retaliate because you are one. It's like left hand chopping the right hand. I mean, left hand harming the right hand. Basically. You can't. And if you have this foundation, build piety in your character, your cultivation, say chanting Amitofo, the speed is very quick. The progress is very quick. Every day you improve. So these are the basic introduction we have today in the where we start in learning Buddhism, which is filial piety. Where do we start from filial piety? How do we perform filial piety or loving and respect towards our parents? We'll talk about it next week. So today uh, we talk about here. I hope that everyone could uh, be earnestly in chanting Amitabha and be healthy uh, so that you all be peace and prosperous. Okay. Uh, also, let's go to Pure Land, Amitabha. Let's dedicate our merits. May the merits and virtue accrue from this work. Repay to the creditors, karma creditors of all times and also born in Pure Land, repaying the beings of all directions so that they may be liberated from the sufferings. Repay the four kindness above, relieve the sufferings of those in three parts below. May those who see and hear this aspire to invoke the body heart. Cultivate the teaching for the rest of this life, then be born together in the land of autumn place. Ah,